I remember going to a bar once and then this young Asian woman, Yvonne, was there, was Brody there. was there. <laughs> and she walks up to me and says, thank you for representing like Asian Americans in such a positive way. And I remember feeling like, uh, oh no, I'm the representative? Boy, <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael. Quarter Jade. This guy's Toast. Yvonne. Rodan. Sidion. Masayoshi. Lily. Scar. AKA Offline TV. And you're watching Character Media. creator group that occasionally makes YouTube videos and does a lot of cool projects together and we're all a bunch of friends. Right? Both. Right. 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 Exactly yes. that. <laughs> That's hard. I was gonna say the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Thinks it's really easy. Let's get this guy out of here. Hey, who here would say it's hard and who here would say it's easy? I mean like with every job there's easy parts and hard parts. I, right? I can see different lens on like how you view streaming. It'd be easy. It's easy. Yeah. I mean you're just playing video games. Playing yeah. video oh, games, right? Yeah. Let's not make it complicated hey. here. <laughs> I wasn't making content out of it. Ooh. That's a little harder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Making content while playing video games? Yeah, trying to be funny all the time. It's really hard to be funny when you're supposed to be funny. Like, you're just meeting expectations. I thought that some people are just naturally, effortlessly funny, you know? She's talking about herself. No, I just pointed to my <laughs> I'm loving the confidence that you I think the biggest draw with offline TV is that we put a lot of effort into like actually being friends with one another because I've known Lily and Skara for like almost six years now. Mm -hmm. well, we've lived yeah. together for five of those years and a lot of content group, they come around and then they fall apart because living with people isn't easy. We make sacrifices, we hang out, give up our own time and um, content to like, you know, make content with each other. And I think that's very hard to find in a space like this. So you guys are like really friends. Yeah. I would say so, right? Yeah. We're friends. We are, right? Both <laughs> Like, just check it. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, being a double minority in the streaming space is very important to me and I feel like I fit a bit of a role model figure. I think about like young women who wanted to get into gaming and I hope that I can help inspire them to do that. I think a lot of us feel really similarly and that kind of keeps us pushing towards this goal of like making an easier entrance for other women in the gaming space. Woman. <laughs> your experience that's authentic to yourself is a little difficult to navigate sometimes, but talking to people who've been in this space for a long time helps. Like Ryan Higa, like I grew up watching Ryan Higa, and now we play Valorant together like every week. I'm kind of like old now, so I'm looking towards like the next generation of like Asian American influencers. My view of success is ever-changing. Doing things that feel very fulfilling to me are really important. I have, you know, the roof over my head and sort of the stability, and now I feel like I can explore things that I'm passionate about and make me feel good, and that in and of itself, like having that freedom to do that, feels like success. I think making something that is creatively fulfilling and that can live on past me, so when people know my music but they don't know me, I consider that a success. Like I can make something that is beyond me. My music's gonna pop off when I die, yeah. College students will come up to me and say they do comp side because they watched the video. I'm like, oh, that's a mistake you made. Yeah. <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> you did a 
and things like that. It's like whenever I run into a fan, it's like, oh my gosh, Shorty, I play Valorant because of you. I know that I can be a good rank or a high rank because of you, or I want to stream because of you, or anything like that, which just like feeds into, I guess, my passion of streaming is because I want to inspire other girls and such to do what I do. I like being able to like make something that will make me and my friends laugh, but then if it makes like audiences laugh as well, it's like great, I did a good job. I think being able to make something that's like creatively fulfilling to you and have it um, received well is something that I feel like really good about when I see that other people enjoy it. Any project that I think of and work on, as long as I complete it to its fullest and I do my best and my friends take it really well, the public takes it well, eh, more, more so my friends, that's my success now. That is what I chase for. As long as I'm enjoying what I'm doing and it doesn't need to have any kind of impact beyond that, I tend to have a pretty good idea of what, if I do something that I think is good, that's all I need. Um, the only validation I need, because even if it goes poorly by other standards, I'm pretty confident in my evaluation of stuff. So. I define success based on what my peers say, because when I make like videos, and some will get like millions of views, but um, I think the thing that really matters to me is like the people I respect, they will message me like, hey, I saw your video like you released last week and I really liked it because that's rare. It's really not common for content creators to message each other and say, I like that video and that makes me feel like I actually did something that was worthy of their attention. Can I message you that too? I don't respect your opinion enough. I understand. <laughs> <laughs>